All right. Hey, what do you think? Should we go give it a go? Yeah, we should. We should just give it a go. I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen again real quick and uh, just give everybody a little quick uh, introduction about what we'll be talking about. Um, so uh, the topic today is, is a shoot for um, Viasat, which is a communications company. Uh, the shoot was um, done by John Fulton. So we have John, John with us. Um, Justin Patrick was the senior art producer. He's with Viasat. And Karen Fatante was uh, the producer. She is with Fatante Productions. Do I have that right, Karen? Uh, yes, uh, we're incorporated. It's a production company, Fatante. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you said you're in LA, right? Or San Diego? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm both. So we're just in SF, uh, San Diego right now during the whole COVID-19 thing. Yeah. Justin's a senior art director. Senior art director. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. All good. Uh, I'll fix that later. All right. Um, so anyway, I, I just want to show a couple of slides from the, uh, a couple of images from the, from the production. Um, if my, my, let me advance this. There we go. Okay. Um, this was a, a campaign. Um, uh, if you want to just, uh, Justin, if you could just say a little bit about Viasat and what the what the business is and what this campaign was all about, what you were trying to convey with it, can you just say a few words about that? Yeah, um, you know, kind of, you know, keeping it brief, you know, as you said, Viasat is a global communications company um, that provides internet connections, you know, to the hardest to reach places, you know, that can be on the ground, um, you know, at sea, and in this case, for this campaign, in the air. Um, you know, with, with this campaign, it, it was all about, you know, marketing our aviation internet services, um, kind of starting off, you know, we were really inspired by, um, you know, I think some of you have heard of the golden age of flying, you know, during the fifties and sixties, you know, commercial, um, you know, flying on a commercial airline was this glamorous experience. Um, you had gourmet meals, you know, you had amazing leg room. And, you know, eventually it kind of turned into something that was anticipated, um, almost into something, you know, that was just being tolerated, right? Like, oh, I have to travel, you know, I'm going to be disconnected, um, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, we felt like, you know, with this campaign, you know, how do we bring um, the magic, you know, kind of bring that magic back to the, the travel experience, you know, kind of, you know, by offering great internet connectivity, you can stay connected to the to the world, you know, while you, while you travel, you don't have to miss out on things. And, you know, giving travelers the freedom to kind of, you know, fly without compromise or limitations is where we really wanted to go with this campaign. Um, and we did that in different ways with um, the levitation. Um, it's, you know, kind of representing that freedom and, you know, that ease of, of doing what you need to do, um, you know, while you're being in the air. So kind of pushing that boundary of what's possible um, during your journey. Okay, and uh, who came up with a creative concept? I mean, can you can you um, just tell me a little bit about that? And then also, where was this? Where did where has this campaign appeared? Is it out of home? Is it at airports? Is it um, uh, a social media campaign? What what's the range of it? Yeah, so um, you know, kind of start, starting off with your first question, um, we have an amazing creative group at Viaset. So um, this took you know it was a full team effort. Uh, myself, the creative director, designers, writers, strategists, um, working with the business area, you know, it was, it was a full, it was full team effort. And as far as it, it, it being previewed, um, our, our big launch was um, AIX, um, it's the Aircraft Interior Expo, it's a trade show for, for airlines. Um, you know, so we had a huge booth and these graphics were displayed there. We also were in um, different aviation publications as well. Okay, and um, how did you, uh, how did you select John for this campaign? How did you, how did you choose the photographer? Yeah, you know, kind of going through and, you know, as the, con the concept developed, um, kind of knowing that, okay, kind of having this levitating feel really represents what we want to get across. So um, myself and the team, we, we looked through a couple photographers and it wasn't just about the work. Um, I needed to talk to them as well. Like I wanted to hear how they would set up a levitating person right and john just had this this theory of kind of of uh, this kind of using bungee cords and having a person um jump in the air and, and capture uh, them in like mid-flight 
that sounded um, what I was looking for. I think it, it kind of captures that, you know, the clothes floating, the hair, the, um, you know, I, I really wanted this to feel believable and not just like, oh, they're sitting on a pedestal and we photoshopped that out. Um, so it was really important for me to capture um, that gracefulness. And, okay. and that, yeah. Um, I, I want to ask, so, so had you put it out for bid or did you just have informal talks with a few photographers? Uh, in other words, was this a creative call where, where photographers had to um, uh, sort of strut their stuff um, in answer to a specific brief or what was the um, if, yeah. if I can yeah, Karen. Go ahead. Uh, in, initially, when Viasat had contacted me and Justin and I had met with everyone and they had explained their concept and what they were going for, I presented them with 10 photographers whose portfolios reflect aspects that they were looking for in the campaign. Mm -hmm. And then after that, Viasat narrowed it down. And then Justin had calls with the photographers. And, you know, Justin, take it from here. But that was where he got into the nuts and bolts of what he, what the photographers felt that they could offer for such a specific project. Yeah, and it, and it really came down to talking to the photographers and, and getting, you know, imagining their execution. I mean, that was a big thing um, in choosing the photographer. It was, you know, of course it's about the, the bid and, and what it looks like, but, you know, if I felt like if we don't get this right, there's no campaign. So, um, you know, that, that was something that was big on my mind is, is getting that right photographer that, that has that same vision and not only can execute, but I felt like John can bring something to the table. I think that's a good, you know, that's a good sign for, at least for myself as an art director, looking for a photographer that brings ideas to the table instead of just executes on an, a, a decided idea. Uh, so, uh, and any examples of, do you remember any particular ideas? I want, I'd like John to jump in here too, if yeah. to, just about um, that call and what you remember of it, John. Um, sure, yeah. Um, I mean, the concern from the, from the beginning was Justin had worked on this, uh, this really unique campaign for, for his company that never done anything like this before. Um, so it was a bit of a risk and something, you know, visually that they'd never done before. And when you're talking about customers being in the air, you know, per perceptively like in an airline or uh, an airplane, it could easily look like turbulence, like they got launched out of their seat with all the crap in their lap, you know? So that was a big concern from the beginning. Um, so I think where Justin and I really connected was just about not only technically how to do it, which was really important, but just about the details of how these things would come together. Um, the aesthetics, uh, this, I mean, it was a really technical job and, and, and uh, that, was, that was a lot of it, but um, he and I connected really early on during that creative call and many, many hours talking uh, mm -hmm. uh, during pre-pro, just about the details of how these things should look, um, the elegant little nuances. Yep. How, um, so how did you avoid having it look like turbulence? Like what was the solution to that particular problem? I had shot um, similar things uh, previously, at least one. Um, and uh, like Justin said, they, uh, there's, usually two or three ways to do this that have been done in the past and you know sitting on a stool editing out that kind of stuff which is terrible um jumping on trampoline which i had done a shoot like that before for for a different idea um but those all have a lot of downfalls um and, and drawbacks uh so what we set out to do was come up with a way to really catch them in a point of something that really looked like zero gravity um so we did a lot of studying. We, you know, looked at astronauts in zero gravity, and and I looked through a billion ways about how to pull this off. Um, uh, I talked with my producer uh, Teresa Marsh in uh, Martha in L.A. and uh, about potentially having some sort of rigging system, and she connected me with uh, several riggers, and uh, you know, we kind of dialed in what was going to work. Um, so we have this this full body harness. Um, that uh, was hidden underneath the clothing of, of all the talent um, and the wires cut through holes on the side. So, and the, the benefit of, of this compared to like a trampoline or something like that is that they, the talent has a lot more control over their flights, over their, their motion. 
um, and the air time where hair and everything feels like it's underwater or in zero gravity uh, lasts a lot longer and with a lot more control uh, than being on like a tramp or something like that. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I just want to ask um, about the. Um, let's talk a little bit about the just sort of the pre all the pre-production planning. I mean, you've you've been alluding to that and figuring out this technical issue. What 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 else went into pre-production planning? We had a, a really, I mean, the budget was was definitely solid and good, but you know, we were definitely stuck with uh, two shoot days, one pre-light day. There's no way that we could have done a, 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 a fourth. So it was a lot to get done in that time. So we knew that everything really had to be dialed in. So um, we had 10 different executions, 10 different talent, uh, and 10 different finals uh, for deliverables to, to do in basically two days. Uh, mm -hmm. So we pre-planned everything. I rebuilt rebuilt the studio to scale in CGI. So I had all the measurements. Um, experimented with cameras uh, so I could get the right uh, digital cameras, uh, get the right perspective, mocked up the models, took measurements everywhere. Uh, it would have been really easy to show up and uh, just, you know, you could spend, you could spend three hours going, experimenting with uh, body positions on a single model. So uh, Justin and I really worked to, to dial in what we wanted um, as far as body positioning for each, for each person. So like this is the concert goer. So, you know, she would have a different kind of body posture uh, than, than, you know, the parent or, the, you know, our sports guy. Um, so we, we worked really hard to get everything dialed in and to make sure we were on the same page. So when we showed up to the studio, um, you know, everything was set up and measured uh, to the inch um, and body positions pretty much dialed in. I, I want to, John, I, mm -hmm. I just want to jump down to a slide. It's, it's toward the end of the slideshow here. So I'm going to scroll mm -hmm. through fast showing, um, there it is. This is... Uh, you measured everything, as you said, and I'm just wondering, this was the pre-production day where you, how did you figure all these camera heights and distances and all that? Was it just experimenting on pre-production day or what? No, it, that was all done um, in the two weeks we had uh, it, uh, before we went out to LA. So this was done in, in uh, um, Cinema 4D. So, I mean, I built everything to scale. So the studio was the actual measurements. I brought, you know, human models in, uh, you know, used real focal lengths and real world lighting and everything. So, so we had something to talk about and experiment with uh, virtually before we even showed up on set because we were so tight on time. Um, and that's also how uh, I dialed with my lighting too, was able to, you know, experiment and show Justin some different options uh, to where we could come to a, a consensus about the overall look um, lighting of, of the perspectives of the angles and of the body positions before okay. we put up. So can you, can you see the slides that I'm showing now? Are they showing uh -huh. up? Yeah. Yep. Are these helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So these are, these were, yeah. So these were some of the, of the rough mock-ups, um, just experimenting in, in camera, camera height relative to, to, uh, the talent relative to the, uh, the, the airline seat, uh, body posture. Uh, we we did a lot of this, uh, put in a lot of time, making sure we we're on the same page and dialing things in ahead of time. Okay, how did you uh, um, tell me about the talent scouting? How did you who who took care of that? Um, Karen, yeah, that's probably a Karen question. Karen, do you want to yeah. talk about the talent um, choosing the talent? Yeah, I mean. Um... Again, Biostat had very specific criteria that they were looking for. We went through uh, two different casting agencies. One is a woman who specializes in athletes because we knew that we would need to have a lot of people with the stamina to be able to handle these jumps and moves. And um, we, you know, we got a bunch of choices in based on the criteria and then Justin and John started, you know, discussing it and making their selects. But I think, you know, with hindsight, if we hadn't dealt with the athletic casting agency, it may have been a more difficult shoot because uh, yeah. I'm sure as John can tell you, the uh, 
it, it was tedious. I mean, they really had to have athletic physiques or athletic stamina to constantly be jumping up and down and, and make, moving their positions and following, you know, John's direction. So. Yeah, we we uh, we all we all watched uh, many many hours of uh, people doing uh, taekwondo and break dancing and and uh, exhibiting a, you know uh, whatever they they were they were doing really well athletically, um, was was pretty entertaining. It was a fun part of the process. Yeah. Oh, so this was like a video casting thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just felt like it was really important to um, you know after we determine these scenarios to have these people really feel like, you know, they are that scenario, the parent versus the consigor versus, you know, you know, the, the working person, we really wanted to just um, see them in action, right? Because this is almost like an action shoot, even though it's, it's still photography, we wanted to see how they perform. So, you know, that was, that was really big for me is, you know, someone on paper had a great headshot. We watched their video and said like, they're not gonna be able to do this. So um, it just alleviated a lot of the, you know, you know, the pressure from just going off of headshots. I, I, I would always recommend if you're going to do any type of live shooting, get that kind of acting reel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, we, we, we talked a little bit, you, you mentioned the budget in passing, and I'm just wondering um, um, what... Can you talk about how the how any budget constraints you may have had shaped the shoot or what you could or couldn't do? I mean, how did how did the budget shape the way you did it? Or any of the choices you made, creatively or otherwise? Karen, I think that might be something for you to address. Well, the budget did have several incarnations. Um, by the time Viasat brought me on board, they had me give a rough estimate initially they had been considering doing video and since this was a um, project for them they ultimately decided that print would be the best way to go and then down the line if they wanted to extend into video they would do it um so based on that we did get four bids in from four different photographers and you know per most bids there was a variance of about seventy thousand dollars between the lowest and the highest and, um, you know, once John had, uh, Justin had spoken with, he, Justin spoke with each of the photographers, and once he had made his decision based on um, their approaches, because the interesting thing was each photographer had very, very different approaches. And it was like John had um, mentioned, one photographer did just want to do it via a trampoline. Um, another photographer, Justin, jump in, because um, you spoke with these guys directly. Yeah. Uh, wanted to do I think it was a lot more digital heavy and Justin you didn't want that you really wanted it to be all done in camera as much as possible yeah so. uh, and just you know talking through as as John mentioned you know you know hair and clothing are an important part right if someone's sitting on a pedestal <laughs> that's so much production work to get their suit or their pant leg or their cuff or their scarf to look like it has zero gravity so I, I really knew what I was looking for and um, you know, having those conversations just helped. Um, and and uh, John, I just want to double back and ask you a question about the creative call. Like, what kinds of questions were you asking about the production, and and what um, what Justin wanted, and what Karen was expecting? Uh, did you have questions, and what were they? Uh, I mean, mostly it was it was about the overall tone uh emotional and visual tone um we discussed some of the technical options uh up front but it was mostly it was mostly about the aesthetics um mm -hmm. and with the you know the ultimate goal uh how he wanted to move the viewers okay now i also uh, you you had mentioned there was there was quite a bit of uh post production on this correct is is that correct yeah yeah, yeah, lots of posts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so how? But, but um, we were just talking about how Justin wanted most of, yeah. wanted it in camera. How do we square mm -hmm. those two things? If there was, um, like, yeah, obviously it can't be all. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't wasn't privy to to know to know who the other photographers were or or what their approaches were, but um, 
even, even though I mean, like every one of those uh, of the of the final ten images, their bodies are made of you know between ten and twenty or thirty you know pieces, but mm -hmm. everything is in flight. I mean, every we might not have had a single frame where the hair was the best frame we took or the scarf was the best frame, but they were all in air shot exactly at the right moment where they have that little bit of hang time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Which makes it a lot more realistic as opposed to just going full CGI, which was what one of the um, mm -hmm. photographers had presented as his option. Okay. Yeah, and it, it gives a, compared to, you know, straight CGI, um, it, it has that, you know, that, that touch of real organic flight. And not to say that it can't be done really well in CGI, but uh, you know, all that is very intentional. Um, there's not nearly as much room for experimentation or discovery um, as opposed to really doing a real shoot and seeing how the scarf moves in the air, seeing yep. how, you know, a woman's hair, you know, 14 inches of hair moves on a rig like that. It's, it, it's, it's different. Then I think it has its own, you know, kind of beauty that's, that's a little bit different. Right. Okay. Now, did you anticipate so much post-production and did you do the post-production yourself or do you have a retoucher who helped you with that? I did it myself. I do, I do, I mean, pretty much all my, my own post. It's, it's, a uh, it's usually a big part of my, my, my process and, uh, appeal. Um, yeah, we knew it was going to be a lot of post, uh, from the get go. Um, one of the concerns was that, uh, these final images needed to be, you know, incredibly modular. So, you know, any, they need to be able to take any final image and crop it to an extreme vertical or an extreme horizontal for, you know, every, every possible um, final output. Uh, and some of them were giant. So, um, yeah, we, we shot the, I mean, the maximum size uh, on some of these things were going to be, you know, billboards and, uh, um, you know, 12 foot wide things at the airport, things like that. So, we need to shoot super high res, you know, um, 100 megapixel medium back. Um, and those final files ended up being eight feet wide, four by eight feet at 300 pixels an inch, which is, I mean, by far the biggest thing I've ever built is, and the layered files were 22 gigs each. So, uh, you know, if you can imagine several hundred layers and uh, each at 22 gigs and, you know, I've got a smoking fast computer, it would still take, you know, 20 minutes to open, <laughs> uh, 20 minutes to save, everything yeah. that's scary. So, um, and with that much high res, it's just, you, I, I'm, you know, working on such a, a small scale, um, just because people are going to be up close, you know, every single thing needs to be perfect. How, so, how, you know. John, how, how did you make sure you, ha you had everything you needed? And how did you know that you had everything you needed for post? Was that something you took care of on set or did you have a, a, a shot list you worked from or how did you make sure that you had absolutely everything in camera that you were going to need in the end? Uh, part of, I think um, part of, of uh, what I wanted to do to make sure, that, I mean, because I knew all these pieces were going to be, were, were going to be coming together in pieces, the files, There's, it wasn't going to be in a, in a single frame. Um, we were live comping. So, so we did a test on the pre-light day, uh, dialed in the you know final body positions, and then when we went to each 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 person, we were pulling pieces on the fly. So like, oh that body's great, pull that one aside. That body's great, pull that one aside. Okay, we got the body. Okay, let's uh, let's just focus on the hair or the expression, that kind of thing. And yeah, our our our, our uh, digitech was live comping, so so we knew we we had what we needed. Okay. Um, what were some of the uh, what were some of the um, challenges that you ran into on set that you may not have anticipated? Were there anything any any problems you had to solve on the fly? Um, yeah, you know we we spent so much time um, getting such a specialty cast. Uh, there were there were a couple people that uh, one in particular that just really getting used to the rig is is its own thing. It's not something you know people have done before for the most part. So uh, we had a, a three, three man rigging team to help help people get situated and kind of help them train and get moving into thing. But um, there were a couple of people that just, just could not do it. Um, so, so it, it's one of those situations where you, you, you know, uh, uh, the second or third talent nails it does really well. Like uh, the, um, the flight attendant, every single frame we took of her was perfect. 
every expression. Uh, she, yeah, she was just effortlessly graceful in the air. Um, she, you know, we only needed to use like three or four pieces for her. Um, but then the next person uh, would just not be able to move in the air, just not comfortable. So, so when you take, when, a, when you get somebody like the flight attendant, you make adva take advantage of that time um, and save it for, uh, for maybe somebody who, who doesn't, uh, doesn't do that well in the rig. Um, yeah. Okay. Here's, here's a, here's one of them. I forget. I think this was the concert goer, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, and, and I'm just going to scroll through some of these pictures showing you preparing her, um, for there she is getting the, now hmm. how, this one, um, makes me ask a little bit about the direction you were giving. How, how are you directing the talent on the set? What, how, what's your direction style? Well, this, this was a lot, I mean, this one isn't, isn't so much, uh, you know, emotionally based. So, um, it's, it's, it's just trying to explain to her how to get to the right body position. You know, they're interacting with the digital devices, um, which are, you know, that we've got like cardboard dummies and things like that in, in attached to their hands. So I'm just explaining in this, how to get to the right angle and, you know, how her head needs to be. Um, so she's actually looking at the screen correctly. Um, that's something that if you, you know, don't nail is, is definitely a problem in post. If you don't have uh, the eyes looking in the right direction where the hand needs to be, um, you know, it's pretty tough to get over. So I think that's what I was doing there. And wh what about the emotional direction? How, how do you get the talent to, um, to convey the emotion that you're looking for? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like a deeply, these aren't like deeply nuanced characters. Um, so, you know, concert goer, she's, she's showing some excitement, um, you know, very engaged and excited in her, in her, in her uh, facial expressions, um, in, in her fingers. I mean, we put detail or uh, thought into, you know, every part of that. Um, but uh, it, it wasn't an overly complicated uh, emotional angle. Okay. Um, tell me about, uh, you know, you, you were talking a little bit about the, uh, um, the flight attendant in particular, you said she nailed everything. Um, Every how about some of the others, what, what were some of the other, um, and, and some of the other challenges you ran into with some of the other talent? Um, I mean, so working with the rigging itself, you, you can see it in, in, uh, in that one, uh, she's our, our businesswoman. Um, you know, the, the, the bungee cords are right there. So they're, they're bumping their arms, uh, things like that. So, uh, that it's, it's definitely a challenge. I got in the rig and, and tried to do some of the poses and, you know, even if you're really athletic, it, it's a, it's a challenge. So we just, we had to shoot a lot of frames. Um, our, our, uh, three man rigging team would really, really help, uh, explain how to move, uh, well into the rig. I mean, she's she's only in the air for you know half a second. She's got to, you know, get this cross leg position and the angle of her body just right, the angle of her head just right. Um, you know, that's why we used a lot of frames to build the final ones. Um, yeah, uh, the, we kind of just worked through everything as, as it came up. Um, that was something that uh, that I had not really thought of or expected was how it was going to be bumping and interacting with their arms in some of the poses. But um, yeah, we got over it. Did, and you said you had to do 10 of these in two days, was it? Did I hear that right? <laughs> 10 in two days. Yep. So, so you had, you had maybe what, two hours to work with each one. I'm just guessing. Uh, I think we had an hour is what we had on the schedule because we had, um, several hundred props to shoot from different angles as well. Uh, which, which took a lot of time. Um, uh, we weren't, 100% dialed in on which props were going to be positioned, cho chosen at all, or positioned where. So, uh, yeah, we did hours and hours at the end of each day uh, shooting props. So, yeah, I think it was about 45 minutes to an hour with each person. Yeah, and and uh, tell me about the crew. How 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 big was your crew, and and who were they? What what were some of the tasks? Uh, it was you know normal full crew, 15 or 16 people. Um, Three assistants, uh, hair, makeup, wardrobe, uh, Karen, 
<laughs> Pitches, um, yeah. We had three three riggers, which was crab, we had the riggers, yeah. which was the yeah. normal crew, mm -hmm. and they were excellent. And John, didn't they have like an aerial, like a trapeze school as well? Yeah, that was uh, that kind really, of attached to our, our lead rigger, Tim Storms. Um, he he runs a uh, training aerial kind of school who does a lot of this stuff. So um, so yeah, we she, he brought in uh, one of his students to uh, uh, during the pre light so we could uh, experiment and dial in the lighting uh, and, and and get all the body positions down. So that was uh, on our team on our end. It was probably fifteen or sixteen people on the agency yeah, side. Yeah, was. Um, yeah, and all of the stylists had assistants and second assistants just because we knew we had to move as quickly as possible. The prop mm -hmm. stylist is also yeah. a set designer, so he had that larger scale of um, knowledge, which he, you know, he was sourcing everything from airplane chairs to, you know, minutia, like, mm -hmm. so. It, uh, you know, we were really fortunate. I mean, we had an incredible group of people and everyone knew that we had to be as efficient as possible because due to certain budget constraints, we really did only have the pre-light and the two days and everyone came together and I think they did an incredible job. I mean, John's mm -hmm. pre-pro, I, I don't think I've worked with a photographer who had such detailed level of pre-pro before. And I, I think there are so many variables where things could have gone wrong or happened. And I think that level of planning beforehand really made it a much more um, smoother shoot than it could have been, which was awesome. <laughs> and can I jump in with a question, John and Karen? How, how did you guys um, decide who was gonna do what part of the, the production? Well, uh, well this, this one was, was kind of a situation, yeah. Oh, just because my part was almost more involved in the pre-production aspect of it where Biosap brought me on and then John had his own producer come in. So she and I are working very closely together, but um, there was almost like two parts and overlap in terms of the production side of it. Yeah, it was unique. I mean, because there was two dedicated producers, uh, everybody kind of had to define their roles and, you know, it was, everybody worked great together. It was just such an awesome team. But how did you decide who was going to tackle which part of it? Um, it kind of just flowed. I mean, you know, John was really, really involved. Him and his producer were very involved on the entire, they basically took over the entire, uh, you know, the rigging, you sourced all of those people, um, and the, the hands-on stuff. And then I was much more, I was dealing with the budget, um, the initial estimates, and then dealing with all the super, the, the other parts of the crew, like getting the prop designers, the wardrobe stylists, stuff like that. Who, who was keeping it on, whose, whose job was it to keep it on schedule and keep it moving on shoot day? Um, and it was well, I mean, Teresa helped, but like I created a calendar. So we had like a really detailed calendar with strict deadlines be leading up to the two weeks before the shoot. Um, it initially was going to be a certain date, Justin. And then remember we pushed it for some reason. So we were shooting on the eight, the pre-light was the 18th and the shoot was the 19th and 20th of December. And that was all, they really needed to meet that deadline by the end of the year. We weren't able to push it to January. So that was a bit of a scramble as well because a lot of people weren't available. So. Being ready before Christmas, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we pretty much tried to work off of the calendar. We had a big pre-pro book um, going in and then John had all of his pre-production on his end as well. Um, uh, John, I just want to ask you a little bit about um, budgeting a job, estimating a job. Um, did, your, did you leave all of that to your producer? Um, like, how did you, um, like all the nuts and bolts of a production, like the insurance and the, and the, mm -hmm. and the stuff that nobody wants to think about, but, yeah. you know. I mean, it's a collaborative effort. I mean, my, uh, my, my rep, uh, uh, Vizu um, and uh, Blake Pearson, um, I've been with him for 12 years, 13 years now. Um, get together with with all the producers and, and work through, uh, you know, line by line, 
Um, I'm very involved in that part because it affects the creative and a lot of those creative decisions need to be made uh, before you can uh, put together an accurate budget. So, so yeah, it was very collaborative. Yeah, and, and I also, once Viasat signed off, I was just saying, Viasat signed off on the estimate that I created, and then that, from that, was what we based for um, John. And so his agent and then his producer was what the three of us worked off of moving forward. Okay, and Karen, you said the budget changed over time. Ha, ha, were there, were there um, uh, change orders on set, or just over time the budget was was evolving as you were figuring things out? No, no. Um, it changed in the sense that initially Viasat was considering doing a video component as well. Oh, okay. And then once we saw the um, level of detail that was going to be required and the, you know, since it wasn't just a normal go to a studio or location type of shoot, it had so many uh, additional details involved. Just the equipment and the riggers were a big chunk of the budget. Um, that was not cheap at all. So we, once we realized the direction, you know, the visual direction that Justin had in mind and where they wanted to be going, we created a final estimate, determined that it was going to be print only. And then from that, we really had to adhere to that. Um, Biosat. Uh, the creative director was like, we really can't go beyond that budget. So we all worked very hard to stay within those uh, final numbers. And did that budget include the post-production, which turned into a very long process? And how did you, <laughs> um, I, I don't know if John, if you, if you anticipated um, our, you know, a hundred or I forget how many hours you said you spent on post-production and how you, how, how that got paid for without you losing your shirt. Um, I mean, this, this was, this project ended up being a baby of mine. It, it was a baby of Justin's, you know, I felt very personally attached to it and responsible for it. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm just throwing some extra elbow grease and, and, um, okay. you know, I, I wanted this thing to be perfect. So, so um, yeah, those hours, well, there, was, there was already a decent budget for uh, the post and um, everybody expected it to be a, a pretty significant chunk. Um, it just ended up being more, but uh, okay. so, so I handled it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering if, if there are any, any particular lessons any of you took away from this job? I mean, it sounds like it sounds like every it was a stretch for everybody. And what things might you have learned for future jobs that you would do differently, or that this job might help you on future jobs? I think um, you know, the most generic. Oh, I was going to say the most generic answer: more time, right? Um, <laughs> more time, more money. Yeah, we. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, I think we did a great job with the time we had, and uh, you know, doing it around the holidays too was was a challenge. So that's something you know we might try to you know avoid. But sometimes things need to go to market when they need to go to market. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. For me, I'd say it, it wasn't anything that uh, necessarily learned, but it just reinforced uh, how important pre pro is and detail work, uh, especially with something that was so technical. Um, just having that stuff taken care of um, and in communication with uh, with Justin and the creative team um, it just it, you need to make a relationship long before you you show up on set make sure that uh, that you get each other and that that we're on the same page that that made all the difference in the world yeah okay. and, and you said I, go ahead I, I was just going to say um you know I've I've been fortunate enough, I've done so many shoots in my lifetime and worked with so many different types of photographers and directors, but this one, I cannot emphasize how important John's level of pre-production in terms of what he was doing for this specific shoot, because it was so, in a lot of ways, it was very experimental. I mean, you know, we did get people in and John had examples of stuff like this in his books, but the approach that we had to take due to budgetary constraints and time constraints, um, I think if he had not been so high level in terms of his degree of pre-production in terms, I mean, you saw that chart he had, you know, it's, 
I, I think this could have had a lot of issues if we did not have someone like John, and if John and Justin had not gone into the detailed discussions they had before. I mean, it's easy to look at stuff hindsight, but this could have been a total fiasco, and they were just <laughs> so awesome. I just, as a producer, I'm yeah. serious, because yeah. I look back and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a, the producer, you're always like, okay, what can we go wrong? How can we fix it? But this was so finite. It wasn't like a simple matter of changing the color of someone's shirt or something. It was like, oh, we have a rig and we have to get them rigged and we have to shoot all these props and we have all these levels. So it was, yeah, I, I think um, the pre-production, if he hadn't done that on his end, uh, we probably would have run, run out of time. You know, just a lot of things could have happened. So I think the discussions that John and Justin had were so integral to this flowing as smoothly as it did. Yeah, yeah it sounds like it sounds like all the pre <laughs> it sounds like all the pre-production planning made a huge difference just sort of every detail and having to think of every detail um so mm -hmm. so karen were you were you nervous about this going in it sounds like you were <laughs> you know it's it's funny i mean if anyone had recorded recorded the conversations between Teresa and i the week before the shoot we were yeah we might have sounded a little nervous but, um, you know, once we got everything approved and signed off on and got everything in place and, you know, just knowing the level that John was doing and dealing with the aerialists, the day of the shoot, I mean, everything went pretty smooth. Um, so I don't think I was any more nervous than normal. Um, definitely maybe in the pre-production, I was a little bit more nervous. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but, okay. As the day started to get closer to the shoot and we saw everything coming together, by the time I showed up on set, I was really confident, so. Okay. John, I, I wanted to ask, I, I completely forgot to ask about the lighting. You've mentioned it a couple times, um, um, but it seems like it was far less complicated than some other things on the shoot. Do you want to talk a little bit about the lighting and just, just explain what went into that? Sure. I, yeah. I don't, um, I don't know if it's it, <laughs> on any normal shoot. It'd probably be, you know, one of the, one of the highlights, but this one was so technical and there's so many other elements that uh, are more unique. Um, we could easily get looked over, but yeah, I mean, like I said, Justin and I dialed it in um, beforehand. Uh, I, I wanted it to be soft, but still have direction to it. Uh, so the colors could really pop. Um, Technically speaking, because we're shooting people moving in the air uh, and shooting on a medium format back, we only got you know one shot for every jump, um, and the packs had to be super short first durations. Um, but uh, yeah, that's more on the technical side. Um, yeah, I guess that's what I'd say. Okay, I'm just I just pulled up a few pictures so people can see what uh, you know, get a, get a general idea of it. Um, I don't know if anybody has other questions about that, but if, if so, jump in. Can I, can I jump in with a question, David? Um, yeah. I, I'm curious, yeah. um, Justin, can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, the relationship between the creative director and the art director and the photographer? What's that dynamic like um, uh, in this project? Yeah, I think, um, you know, kind of starting off with the big idea I think is 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 where I think we were all solid with the creative di director, uh, myself, um, kind of coming with an organized plan, um, then going through the process of picking the photographer. I, you know, it kind of aligned perfectly, and you know, I don't think we planned it out that, you know, to be that way, but it just ended up okay. Like we have a great idea. Um, I did some rough comps. We presented them to the business area. They approved them, and immediately. It, I got on the phone with photographers and just wanted to see what is what was possible. So, you know, I think just alignment up front between myself, um, the creative director and the and the business area, the business unit, um, just help things, you know, move it forward. And how much and how much is the creative director sort of uh, hands on? Do, do they does in, in a situation like this, will the creative director just say, go and run with this? Or will they expect us to, to have you keep coming back uh, with updates all along the way? Yeah, in this case, you know, my, my creative director, um, Clay Black, he gave me, um, you know, the freedom to just go with it. Um, you know, myself and some of the creative team had this vision and I kind of pushed it forward. And he's like, hey, you have the vision. You work with the photographer. 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm back here, you know, um, and and he would he would interject where like things you know because I'm, I'm next to john john shooting i'm you know looking at the comps looking at the hair looking at the feet um and then he would come uh, to the side and kind of give me some information based on what the, he heard from the customer so it was like it was like a an ecosystem of people working with like in the shoot so um it, it you know for me it worked really well and one, one thing that photographers are always wondering is What's the relationship uh, in terms of who's deciding who to hire? Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience with, with creative directors, with art directors, with art buyers, uh, with art producers? Um, who, who has the most influence uh, on, on who, who selects, who, on, on who the photographer is going to be? Yeah, I would say in this case, it, it, it was definitely, I had a lot of influence, um, you know, kind of going through developing this idea, kind of doing, you know, some original comping in Photoshop. Um, I kind of brought my top selections and my reasons why and brought that, you know, to the creative director and, you know, him understanding the, you know, the idea and the concept as well. It was, you know, it was almost like a, a no brainer. Um, you know, so I would say in this case, um, the senior art director had, had a lot of freedom to kind of take this where, um, where I thought it should go. Mm -hmm. um, I have another sort of nerdy technical question um, for John. Um, since you had all those different colors, um, was that strictly in post? So did you have, did you shoot a physical chair um, that was gray and you had white backgrounds and, and did you just sort of uh, make everything, all the different colors uh, after that? Yeah. Yes, and uh, I mean, in an ideal world, uh, we would have, you know, found or fabricated uh, exactly the chair that we wanted. Um, but uh, yeah, they they were all they all had to be changed uh, by hand um, into the color. And uh, you can see uh, on the right hand side the uh, um, uh, the non the non business chair. Uh, the bottoms, uh, I, I, I hated the bottoms of those and it's just it's the best, it's the best we could find. Um, yeah. uh, so I, I, I rebuilt the bottom, uh, digitally. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. gonna say, sorry, sorry about that, John. I was being kind of picky on the bottom of the chairs. Oh no, no, no. I was, I was yeah. right on the same page with you. I'd, I'd already, I'd already pulled up a side to be rebuilt uh, before you even mentioned it. Cause yeah, yeah. it's not. Interrupted. Uh, and is, that, is that true of the sort of the light flare on the background as well? Is that completely um, uh, sort of digitally created or was that partially in, in camera? Partially in camera. Uh, I wanted to capture, you know, uh, you know, on, on in, in real life um, on, on that beautiful medium format uh, phase one back. Uh, I, I just took some extra frames uh, separately with some different highlights to work with. To, uh, to build uh, that final big background. Um, Justin, I was curious, uh, you had mentioned that um, uh, you were passing messages, you, things the client was saying. What, what kinds of, what feedback were you getting on set from the client? What were they, if you can share that, what, what kinds of things were they, were they asking for or, or asking about? Yeah, and, and I would say, you know, some of it was was minor, but, you know, um, I would say maybe some wardrobe choices, um, you know, how the hair was styled. Um, you know, I would, as John would shoot, um, I would kind of go upstairs, show the visuals uh, to the customer, and we would have like a brief discussion on like how the position looks, what I envisioned and what John envisioned of like, you know, how does a concert goer look? Um, so, you know, some of that feedback of just getting that like, that live feedback of like, yeah, that looks great. Um, you know, got, got most of that. And um, yeah, I would say little minor tweaks on hair, you know, maybe, you know, what type of shoes, you know, the, the businesswoman is wearing, you know, and what's, what's believable and what's realistic, um, you know, to the market that we're trying to reach. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I, I know there are several, several uh, people tuned in here. If, if there are any questions, um, uh, I, I'd like to open it up a bit. And if, if there are photographers or anybody else who's participating who wants to ask questions, um, jump in. Anybody? All right, well, I got another one for, uh, for John. 
Um, or, or actually for Karen, maybe, um, or, or Justin, did you guys ever consider shooting this in Atlanta? When, when do you think about locations and is it mostly a function of where the client is or where the subjects are or where the photographer is? Uh, I, I'm only guessing that you would have been happier shooting this in, in Atlanta. Um, LA is just such a great place uh, to, to shoot. There's just so many resources. Um, it, it's, it's great. I mean, I'd love Atlanta. It, Atlanta can pretty much accommodate anything, but, um, but yeah, it, uh, we, we had uh, such a great uh, studio um, and such a great uh, core team of crew out there. Um, yeah, just, my, I mean, I think the, and Karen, I think the ultimate reason was, was the client uh, was, up, was up there, so. Yeah, because from a budget point of view, different options were discussed. And uh, to fly the Viasat team to any location where the photographer was going to be, ultimately would have been more expensive than just flying the photographer in. So mm -hmm. um, by LA. And LA just has better resources too in that regard compared to where Viasat is located. They're about an hour and a half south of LA. So we determined LA would just have everything we needed as well. Yeah, I was the only import. <laughs> um, and somebody's asking in the chat if you happen to have any video. Is there? Do you have any assets that uh, that you could share that we haven't seen already? Justin, do you have any? Um, yeah, I, I would say um, you know because we did do like stills, um, we do have a, a great video team at Viaset as well that you know took the challenge on to take those stills and create um, you know movement out of them. So we do have a couple. A couple of videos. I think John, you do have maybe one on 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 your site um, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I do have on my site, sir. I thought you were I thought you were talking asking for uh, like a behind the scenes kind of stuff. Oh, well, yeah. Well, do you have any behind, oh. behind the scenes video that we haven't already seen? Uh, I do, but I don't. I mean, it's there. I, it, <laughs> I don't have it handy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't have any off offhand, but like um, you know, just to see someone jump in the rig and hear the force of them hitting the ground and then jumping back up it was just like oh okay this is what this is how yeah. it's going to work okay uh, was, uh, flashing back that was one one fun little uh, uh, unexpected challenge is, is uh people jumping uh, up and down you know eight or ten feet in the hair and coming uh, in the air and coming down with high heels uh oh. on our mats <laughs> just like puncturing every time i mean, we yeah. had obviously expected because we we had uh skateboard and stuff down but i just did not expect uh, that much force to be coming through so um, yeah, I will. Uh, I will pull um, some of the uh, behind-the-scenes video and and, uh, and uh, post it on my Instagram. Okay, Bill. Anything else? Um, Any, anything? Anything that uh, uh, either either Justin, Karen, or John wants to say about the about the production that we haven't talked about? Any 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 final thoughts about it? Um, the one thing I'd like to add, you know, just for the viewers, uh, because they're probably, um, you know, looking at this from different approaches, is since this did not go through an ad agency and it was in-house through Viasat, you know, there wasn't an art buyer involved. There were, it was a much smaller team of people. And, um, you know, I think with anything, there's always pros and cons to that. In this case, it really worked out well because everyone worked so hard and went so above and beyond, you know, what they would normally do. But on the other hand, if you had had an ad agency, a lot of times they have much more, well, they have, I guess, a different type of resources that can help something of this scope. Like ultimately, I know Viasat had discussed maybe taking this to another level, which would be an incredible thing to see because, um, so much was done just with photography. I think if they went to video, it could be really cool as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like Dan's got a call, a, a question. Yeah, hey, how are you, Bill, and everybody? Um, I had a question about, since it was in-house, Justin, how did you actually find John? Um, was there anything he did in particular that um, led you to his work, or did you just know of his work in general? Yeah, I, I think you know we had some prerequisites of, of what I was looking for when it come when it came to um, levitation and floating, and then worked with Karen and Karen kind of brought um, brought some names to the table and brought some portfolios to the table and spent some time just 
you know, sifting through work and past work and, and then eventually just jumping on a phone, a phone call with them. And, um, and that's where I've really got, you know, you know, I got to share my idea and, you know, vice versa, the photographers got to share like their ideas and was looking for someone to bring more to the table, not just execution. Okay. Any, any final thoughts? Is that about it? I... Nothing for me. Great project. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, thank you all. I, we really appreciate it. Um, Bill, any, any last words from yeah, you? Uh, yeah, for... well, yeah, I, I want to thank John and Justin and Karen uh, and David for, for uh, putting on a great show. So thank you all very much. And thanks for everybody attending. Um, as for if there are any Wonderful Machine member photographers uh, in the audience who want to stick around and, and, and talk uh, Wonderful Machine uh, shop, uh, I'm available if you want to. Um, and, uh, and otherwise, thanks, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thanks. Take care. Thank you, guys.